Bluebeam was built with the construction industry in mind, and it was built for CAD people. So it's a lot more intuitive to do markups and stuff like that because it was built for people in, in our industry. So everything is uh, lined up and functions a lot more like AutoCAD does. That and there's functionalities within um, Bluebeam that, that Adobe doesn't have, such as you know when you're working with a 3D model, you can cut sections of that model and you can you know, pull stuff away and mark up a 3D model. You can't do 3D mo model markups inside a Adobe. You can look at them, but you can't mark them up the same way. There's also spaces, you know, where you can you can identify a space and then you can filter by space and put, you know, see what markups are in what spaces and there's different stuff like that. But the biggest benefit to Bluebeam is the studio. And studio comes free with any, with any version, standard, CAD, or extreme. And it's just a online hosting of documents that anybody can get access to and you can share and you can collaborate and we'll go over that for the majority of it but it's, it's a great tool to have so first off i'll just kind of start with some general overview of how to where to find stuff and uh, then go into kind of how to use it so first off up here the uh the menu bar this is called the ribbon up here it's this part of it is static so this doesn't change but this section over here does change as you cycle through the different file menus so file you notice there it changed this part of it, you know, edit, it's going to change again. So I'll just go through here and kind of say what each one does. More of a FYI so that you, if you have the question about it later, like I remember this happened, you can shoot me an email and I can explain how to do it or something like that. On the file, file tab, file ribbon, there's the create. So you can use this to create from file. You can create a PDF from an image or you can create a PDF from a Word doc and an image and another PDF file. You can combine different, different elements. Here you can combine several different PDF files into one. The batch routine here will do the same function on a list of PDF, of individual PDF files. So for example, the OCR, if you wanna run, if you have a series of scanned drawings, they're all individual files, you wanna run the OCR to pull the text out of them you can do this on the entire set instead of one drawing at a time with a batch routine. You can export from the PDF to different formats for you know different reasons. You can export to text if you want to try to get, you know, just pull out the text from it. Um, PNG if you want to insert into a Word document or something along those lines. So, and then you can, you can export your, your markups. Say, say you've got a, a list of or a running a live project that you're that you're marking up and you complete some of them but you don't complete all of them you can filter out the incomplete ones export those and then import those into a fresh set of drawings so you can keep those markups up to date and, and running there's also a a web browser tab just so if you click on a link it'll uh it'll come up inside of the Bluebeam platform rather than in the internet explorer in a different window. So here on the edit, um, you know, different history, undo, redo, what you've copied and pasted from clipboard is here. Here's the content. The content's kind of nice. You can edit the text in a, in a PDF document. So if you have just a, a, like an RFI log or something like that, and it's in PDF and there's a, a, a number wrong, you can go to the edit text. And as long as it likes the font, it'll it'll edit the text for you right there. You don't have to go back to the Word doc or the Excel doc or anything like that to change it. And you can also cut stuff directly out of the out of the model or out of the drawing and then just or you cut and paste or you can just erase it out. So that'll take the actual line work from the PDF, even if it's not a markup, and just erase it out. You can select your own font. You can select the Bluebeam font out of the list and you can still get it to work. Um, sometimes it will allow, allow you to, sometimes it won't. But let me drag this guy over and see if we can get it to do. So we're going to go content, we'll go edit text. And so this was done, if you look over here, so this is using Arial Narrow, but is it going to let me do it? So yeah, it will allow me to do, oh, see here it's, it changed it over here to Calibri. So if you go back to this list and select Arial Narrow or Arial or Veranda, let's look for, look for the one you like right here. So you should be able to add that text in there. See, see the Revit standards, the drawing standards are to, are to use Arial Narrow. So content, so select, there's, there's also different selection tools. So you can select text in the document. Let me come back to this guy. You can use the document to select the text. 
and then you can cut and paste into a Word document. You can also um, you can also do a select with a lasso. So that's kind of like the lasso in um, in Photoshop or something like that, or I think Word has one too. But if you want to select line work, you're supposed to be able to grab that and then copy and paste. I think it's actually looking for it's actually looking for um, markups. The search functionality is is really nice. Let's see, get rid of that one. Come over here, find one of these that are open. Yeah, the search function is pretty nice. If there's if you're looking for something really specific, like like the data outlet here, you can go, you can click on the search here, or the, you can do the text, or you you highlight the the bullet for visual, and then you get rectangle and you draw the rectangle over the line work that you're looking for, and then you hit search, and it'll go through the document and look for that everywhere. So it'll list them right here, and you can right click on that guy and highlight, and you can click on the next one which doesn't look anything like it. That's weird. But again, you can right click and highlight. And every time you highlight one of those, it gets added down here as a markup. So let's, I'm going to filter or sort by date. There's, there's, a, there's going to be a much easier function to do the uh, takeoffs, okay. the, the quantity takeoffs. There's, there's, there's a function called count, which is really handy. So there's some, some 3D editing tools, and we'll open up a 3D PDF here in a little bit. On the view tab, you can you can bring up the different tabs that we have up over here, and I'm going to go through each one of those too. But it's that's where you find them if you don't have them up already. I think like the 3D model tree is probably not up by default. So if you go to tab, and then you go to this, or you hit Alt three and it'll pop up. Toolbars. There's a lot of different toolbars. They have a lot of different tools on them. I ended up making my own because there's only a very specific set of tools that I like to use. So I made one toolbar that had them all. You can make your own toolbars by going into Customize from the Toolbar menu down at the bottom. And then you add your own toolbar over here on the top right. From this list, you can just click and drag, or you, you highlight it and then hit Add over here. And it'll place them all in here to build your own toolbars. Like I said, I have this toolbar up here along the top, and that's my custom one because those are the tools that I use. You can also store profiles, and then you can also export profiles. So here, there's there's the standard built-in construction profile, which is set up this way, or I can change it back to the profile that I had set up previously. Here's how you can rotate the views clockwise, counterclockwise, or it's also in the toolbar. different navigation options. So the navigation varies. You see here, I'm, I'm rolling the mouse wheel and I'm zooming in and out. And that's like the CAD functionality. And that's when I have this one full page option selected. I can zoom in and out this way. If I want to scroll up and down, I have to hold control and scroll up and down. But if I'm on this option, the scrolling page, rolling the mouse wheel is going to scroll rather than zoom in and out. You know, it's reverse. I hold control to, to zoom in and out. So different navigation options here. 